Hey, hey, here I am in Brooklyn. I've just had a really successful and interesting meeting with the recruitment team of FDNY and discussing all kinds of things related to recent litigation challenges that they've had and how that has resulted in their diversity recruitment drive. Just managing their sheer numbers, so something like 40,000 people can be looking at sitting the test each time they recruit every four to five years. So just managing those numbers is epic and hearing about a lot of their social change programs, some of their targeted recruitment events that they run to attract their ethnic minorities and to increase the diversity mix, which for now has been mandated by law. And they are aiming to get 40% people of colour in their next recruitment drive. So they five years ago, they were at 98% white men. In the last six years it's now dropped to 92 percent so they are making some progress. There's still a long way to go. I'm sitting out here now with Serenia Srisical. Now Serenia is has been a firefighter with FDNY for about 14 years. 11 years. 11 years. She's just recently passed her lieutenant's exam so she's on a list which will be promoted so she'll be promoted to lieutenant within the next two years. She's also the president of their United Women Firefighters Affinity Group. And what I have found really interesting here is the, the influence that the Affinity Groups have and the prevalence. So there is an Affinity Group for the, the Black Firefighters Association, the Vulcan Society. There is the Phoenix for the Asian uh, firefighters. There's the women's group. There's the LGBT. Italian group. There's LGBT. So, and they actually have a really important role in the recruitment, but also in the inclusion piece. And it was really, it was positive to hear the recruitment team so supportive of all of these groups and um, involving them in the processes along the way. So I'm now sitting out in this beautiful park in Brooklyn here and um, we've just finished lunch. I wanted to ask Serenia a couple of questions though, because I'm interested in how, and having been the chair of a women's association in Australasia, I'm interested in, in how Serenia sees the importance of these affinity groups for the objectives of recruitment for diversity and for the inclusion piece. So Serenia, how has your group um, contributed, I guess, to the recruitment for diversity? So um, there's more strength in numbers and we're stronger together, which is why it's important to have an organization. Uh, New York City, there's only 52 women out of a force that's 10,700. So we account for less than half a percent still in the FDNY. And nationally, we're the lowest percentage of for gender um, out of all the major cities in the United States. So um, it's really important for us to increase our numbers and to ensure fairness in the process of becoming a firefighter and um, being trained as a firefighter in fire academy and the tr our treatment in the firehouses as well. So it's all related to um, our low numbers. So a lot of the things that happen in recruitment, a lot of the initiatives and programming come from the affinity groups, um, particularly the women's group and the Vulcan Society. So a lot of the methodologies that they've used from tabling at events to partnerships with organizations to familiarity with the firefighting has been driven by the affinity groups. So um, one of the programs that we're really proud of uh, from the United Women Firefighters is a Women Firefighter for a Day program where um, we take uh, as many women as we can and we have a day in fire academy and they get exposed to firefighting so they get to put out a car fire they get to rappel down a building they get to learn cpr and they get to put bunker gear on and um the vision from this event came from seeing young boys uh and their fathers uh going to visit their fathers in the firehouses and thinking hey like Young women don't have this opportunity and we're not exposed to this. It's the same idea behind the camps, but um, our numbers are so low <laughs> and the process is so bureaucratic and takes so long to become a firefighter that we want to expose as many women as we possibly can to the career of firefighting and to get them excited uh, to 
you know, become a firefighter. It's a great job. Yep, sure is. And then how how did these affinity groups, and in particular the women's group, help with the inclusion piece? We already can recognise that it's one thing to get numbers for diversity through the door. It's another thing to get everyone operating efficiently right. and, and playing well in the sandpit, if you like. So uh, what role do the support groups play in that inclusion piece? So I feel like uh, we're like the backbone of the communities that we represent. So um, a lot of women and people of color don't have family on the job. So they're not groomed into fire department, fire department culture. So the role that our groups play is to let them know, hey, when you go to an academy, it's paramilitary organization, you're gonna get treated like X, Y, and Z. Don't be afraid of it, you know, and it's an education piece. And it's a lot of mentoring involved. So um, I talk to the uh, women in academy every week. You know, I try to mitigate whatever problems that they have and counsel them because it is a shock. You know, we're not raised into, in this sort of environment. It's also shocking to be in a very male dominated space. I came, I was a bike messenger before I became a firefighter. I was one of six women in a company of 300, but that is still more women than in the fire department. Yeah, wow. So it was a still, even for me, coming from a male dominated job, was still a big shock to become a firefighter where I'm the only one. And so you have to prepare women for that, yeah. you know? And, um, you know, and I feel like the more women that there are in an area in the same firehouse working together, the more it's normalized. Okay. So, and I feel like I've been in my area for 11 years. I've never really left my area. And now I run in with women, young women are in my area now. And it took me like five years to work with another woman once. And so now that I work with women, like, you know, they might not be in my firehouse, but in my area, and I see them, it makes my experience better. Okay. And so I get treated better. And so, like, people might think twice before they say something sexist if there's two of us in the room working together. Right. So safety and numbers type thing. Yes. Well, that actually brings me to another question, because we have a challenge back home about women not wanting to be seen to be part of a women's group for the risk of standing out. Right. Um, we got asked a question at our last Women in Firefighting conference about how to deal with women hating on women, right. on other women. And from my trip around the world, this seems to be a common thing in fire departments mm -hmm. is that some women either understand the importance of being together and supporting one another, or other women are, are really heavily ingrained in the not stepping up and standing out and actually just fitting in and not drawing any extra attention and but taking it to the point of rejecting other women or such support groups so what would you say to departments to women who are trying to encourage other women to be part of these support groups or all those women themselves who shun the idea of being part of a support group right why is it important it, um, so, in, uh, we have five women in Fire Academy right now, and only three of them are together in a group, and the other two kind of don't want anything to do with women's group or the other women that they're with, to the point where one of the women said hi to another woman, and that woman just ignored her. And this is what I told them. I was just like, you three are much stronger together than being on your own like the other two. And um, in that instance, it's they help each other. You know, if one has one class one day, the other class the next day, they say, hey, watch out for this. You're gonna expect this. And they study together. And we as women, and, and that extends to the rest of the job. Like we as a whole are stronger if we help each other and we lean on each other and we're stronger if we stand together. And, um, you know, there's a lot of women out there who uh, just might not think of the bigger picture. And that goes back to what I said earlier, is like the more women that we get on the job and work together, the better we get treated as a whole. A lot of women are short-sighted and they're like, no, like I get, I get treated well as this, I love my brothers. That might be true, but um, you can be treated that much better with more women on the job. How important then is the education piece and the communication piece around 
the importance of sticking together and the sisterhood can exist within the brotherhood and make it a complete family. Yeah, I mean, I think it's extremely important because as you know, traveling internationally, we all face the same problems. Every single woman, and that it's just, and this problem is inherent in any kind of non-traditional work for women, where women get isolated and feel that this is a way to protect themselves. And, um, you know, the more women you can be like, hey, they didn't give me this position, and I feel like it's just because a woman, I'm a woman, and or I have this issue in my bathroom, another woman would be like, yes, me too, and this is how I dealt with it. Yeah. And it's kind of like... A man will never understand how to take care of your hair, <laughs> like, you know, like bathrooms, uniforms, like, you know, all the stuff that are specific to women, you're not going to get from the, the senior guy in your firehouse. So it's really important for us to lean on each other and um, come together and say, hey, like, this is what, like, you know, we stand for. Yeah. Cool. How much have you driven policy change in FDNY around maybe maternity policies or carers leave, some of the recruitment events? Um, a, a lot of it, uh, the president before me has driven a lot of the policy towards the bathrooms because we had, and we still have this issue of men using the women's facilities or going to the women's facilities and making it a complete, complete atrocious mess or using the women's facility as a way to harass women. And so recently, um, we have a new policy where all the women's bathrooms have to be locked and we all have the same key. Wow. And so it became the standard just to try to address those issues. Then there's other policy about um, uh, articles being hung up on the wall. And so um, that was a problem in the FDNY that it would be some anti-diversity articles or writings that, um, or, uh, tabloid articles that target women and they post it everywhere okay. and now you can't do that so but before policy. yeah before it was like free for all okay. but the main thing we do with the women's group though is the training program yeah. and that's like our bread and butter to get women on the job is uh training them to be able to pass cpat mm -hmm. and to be ready, ready for academy, academy because cpat is academy is so much more difficult than, than cpat and we need our women to be able to graduate. You want them to be successful, yeah. Absolutely, right. and we teach them too. Uh, we have um, like study sessions for the women. We're having one this weekend. Yeah. yeah, just like, it's just giving tips and yeah. advice. Our bodies are different. We do things differently than the men. Yeah. We're stronger in our lower bodies. So there might be ways that women have been doing like uh, an evolution that the men might not be teaching because they don't really know how to do it. And right. that's where we come in. Yeah, okay. Excellent. Well, good luck. Thank you so much for a meeting today. I'm oh, sure I'll you. see you at some other conferences and things around the world. And um, yeah, good luck with all your programs. May all the women in FDNY succeed. We need some more officers. We need more women through the door. 52 out of 10,000 firefighters. There's a fair bit to go, but uh, I'm confident that they're, they're on the right track. So that's me done in New York City. Uh, now Girls on Fire will be heading upstate, going to two more camps, going to Camp Fully Involved in New Hampshire, and then across to Utica Fire Academy for Camp Phoenix, one of the original fire camps for girls. Looking forward to it.